Hello, welcome to the EKG Guy. Welcome if this is your first time, we're glad you're joining us. If you're coming back, welcome back. So we're going through this ECG coding reference guide. Okay, so those of you that don't have access or wondering what this is, go to www.ekg.md, okay? Because we're kind of revamping the site, you may see this change. So ideally, you know, if you want an exact URL, you can simply put that in, okay? Otherwise, you can search for the coding reference guide. So put that URL in, put your email here, okay? Press submit, you'll get an email. So check your email, and at the email, you'll get a link. Click on the link, and you'll be have access, okay? You just do that the first time, all right? And then when you get in, you'll come to the ECG coding reference guide, and you'll see 10 different parts here, okay? We are now here in general features and P wave abnormalities. In this lecture, we're gonna be looking at artifact. So what you'd wanna do is click that scroll down and you'll go to artifact and we're gonna uh, talk about that today, okay? So pretty much uh, we have all these features and we're just going one by one to make sure that it all makes sense, okay? If you're wondering about the previous ones, then just go back and search for those videos. All right, so let's get started. So here we're talking about artifact, okay? And you may notice from the coding reference guide, if you're looking at it now, um, that there aren't many examples there, okay? I've added more here, and I can add those, upload them to the uh, site when I get a moment, but let's go through this. So artifact is pretty much anything that's man-made, okay? Not only, not, I don't mean man-made because the electrical activity is, you know, you can say is man-made, okay? But something that is outside of the body or something that we're doing that's artificially uh, impairing the signal we're receiving or finding. So some of the things you should note are a physiologic tremor, okay? So this often mimics a fast atrial rate, some say around 500 beats per minute. Another thing you can see is in Parkinson tremor. So, you know, these patients have a resting tremor. So if, if you have some of those limb leads on or, you know, the tremor is a little out of control because it's a resting tremor, okay, in Parkinsonism, uh, then you can have that, okay, it may be, give the feature of an atrial flutter or rate around 300 beats per minute. So it's really important to make sure when you're seeing these abnormal uh, findings that you're ensure uh, what the patient's underlying clinical scenario is. Now, you can also have skeletal muscle fasciculations or movements. So, for instance, if the patient is hypothermic and cold, you may see shivering artifact. You can see uh, surgical electrocautery, okay? So when they're in the surgical procedure and using uh, the device, then you may see some artifact from that. And then as well as equipment malfunction. And down here, you'll see a number of them, okay, that I've listed. Now in our course, if you already have the course, you know that we go through each one of these for an individual lecture and discuss them in detail, how to prevent them, and so forth. Here I have some examples. So here you can see the muscle tremor, okay, it's a high frequency one. Okay, and it's that artifact finding. You can see some QRS complexes that are maybe coming out, okay, but it'd be good to know what is the patient's normal underlying rhythm, okay? So that's one thing to keep in mind. So those are maybe the normal QRS complexes, but the artifact is uh, interfering with the proper signal. And that's where the machine that's interpreting may actually have some problems because it's not, it doesn't account for all that artifact. Now, muscle tension is another high-frequency artifact, and you can see that here, okay? Within our QRS complexes, you have this artifact down here, okay? We see that with muscle tension, okay? So muscle tremor, we said muscle tension. There's a respiration. This tends to be more low-frequency. Notice how you have this undulation, okay? That's considered an artifact, and then within the undulating, you have these QRS complexes that are showing up okay so that's one thing to keep in mind movement okay so if there's any movement you can see this artifact here notice this patients moving out of bed okay may appear maybe this is like uh, flutter waves but in fact this is artifact okay so always being aware of what the patient is doing is important transport if you're taking a patient from you know to get a, a ct image or away you may notice this artifact 
okay, and be like, oh man, the patient's in, you know, some ventricular arrhythmia, V-fib or so forth, but make sure you're aware that artifact can arise with that, all right, and that's why really taking a look at the patient's important. Now, there's this interesting one here that I, I came across, okay, and this is with a spinal stimulator, okay, so some people have uh, these placed, and notice it's quite neat, okay, you can see these uh, almost like pacemaker uh, spikes that are pretty much across here, okay? And then within them, notice that you have the regular spikes, okay? So that's one thing that you probably can't change, okay, with that patient. But it's good to be aware that, you know, maybe this is, in fact, it's not the pacemaker that's going out of control, okay? And those are not all pacemaker spikes, but in fact, it's a spinal stimulator. So just some things let's recap so artifact again this is something that's not normal of the intrinsic electrical conduction system of the heart so something outside of that that's causing this we talked about physiologic tremor okay that can be very fast the parkinsonian tremor because they have that resting tremor skeletal muscle fasciculations or movements if the patient's shivering surgical electrocautery and equipment malfunction <clears throat> We talked about these different examples with the muscle tremor, muscle tension, respiration, movement, transport, and that spinal stimulator. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available. So again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay? So this is our website. And what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute. And this is the course here, over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100 more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter, okay? So completely separate from what you're getting online for free, okay? These are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book, okay? And then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide. Uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there, okay? We'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows, uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay? You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay? And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less 
uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.